Animation has never been easier. It's the hot new thing when it comes to presentations. PowerPoint, I'm going to tell you 99% of what you need to know about animation for your next presentation. Folks, I can't tell you how many ads, blurbs, emails, tweets, newsletters, blog posts I've seen recently about animation. It's the new craze with presentations and in fact I've seen in my own clients some interesting sometimes funny animation to bring presentations a lot. Here's what you need to know. Don't worry about animation until you have a great speech. Folks, here's the problem. Uh, imagine if you're trying to start a new restaurant. You want a big national restaurant chain and you spend all of your time focusing on the decor. The lighting. Now, lighting may be important. Seats may be important. But then, five minutes before you open the restaurant, someone says, hey, uh, what are we going to do with food? So, well, run down to the grocery store and get a, fruit, uh, get, get a few frozen TV dinners and we'll just microwave. Do you think that restaurant's going to work? Now, I understand that not every restaurant is a fancy gourmet five-star restaurant or a three-star Michelin restaurant. But I've never seen a restaurant actually operate successfully that didn't give real thought to its food. McDonald's, you might love it or hate it, but there's a lot of thought put into the food, how it can be sourced from the same potato growers. It's not just randomly thrown together in a microwave at the last second because all the time was spent on the McDonald Land playground. No, that's not what Ma McDonald's does. It's certainly not what any uh, fancy high-end restaurant does in your town. Well, that's how I feel about people who focus their energies on animation and presentations. My question to them always is, before you've done that, have you actually stood up, given your presentation, video recorded it, looked at it, and determine that you're interesting and memorable and that you're coming across the way you want. Have you shown that video and have you practiced that speech in front of people who represent your audience? Ask them what they remember and do they remember the messages that are most important to you? Now I've asked that question for years. No one has ever been able to say yes to that. And that, my friends, is the real problem with animation. It, it's people are using it as an excuse not to focus on what's really important. If you're running a restaurant, uh, maybe the most important thing is the convenience of your food or the, how quickly it's delivered. It's not always about the fancy food, but at some point, if you're running a restaurant, you have to actually focus on food. If you're giving a presentation, you actually have to focus on the ideas that are coming out of your mouth and that you're saying to your audience. Otherwise, go to film school and make a film or type an email and stay at home and email it to people. But a presentation is about you speaking. Do not spend a second on animation until you've actually delivered your speech on video, watched it, and determined that it's great as is, it's memorable as is, the animation will simply be an enhancement. Sorry to sound like I'm on my hobby horse here, but I just find people will, will go to so many lengths and stretches to avoid the obvious thing they have to focus on for their presentation. It's not slides, it's not animation, it's not uh, more emoticons, it, it, it's not more and more slides, it's actually having something interesting and memorable to say, practicing it on video until you like it. Folks, if you would like more training on how to be a better presenter, all you have to do is go to my website. You can click below the link below. I'm going to send you at no charge access to my free online public speaking course, or if you are speaking to the media, my online media training course. There's no charge, there's no obligation. Go ahead and sign up for it today. Again, Go to MediaTrainingWorldwide.com or just click the link below in the description. Now in other news, some of you may have heard of an organization called Ignite. This was started out west back in 2006. It had a tech focus 
And it was really about sort of a miniature TED, but much more open. Anyone could speak for five minutes, and the limit was 20 slides, five minutes, anyone can get up and speak. This was started out in a Seattle bar out in 2006. Well, it sort of went dormant, but now it has reignited. It's being uh, brought back to life. And O'Reilly Media, which is a kingpin in publishing and events, is taking it on. They are relaunching it as Ignite Talks PPC. I wish them luck. The world needs more speaking opportunities and opportunities for people to speak where they've put some thought into it and have a little structure. So I'm hoping they pay attention. If you have a favorite Ignite speech, feel free to email it to me or let me be aware of it. We can put a spotlight on it right here. And you can always email me, tj at mediatrainingworldwide.com. In other speaking-related news, and this kind of relates to the first topic of the day. There was a competition, I believe it was in Asia somewhere, where students put together pitches, and it was an elevator pitch. I'm sorry, it wasn't the Middle East. I was thinking oil-related. It was in Houston. And this was put on <coughs> in Shell Auditorium. So it was a, a pitch with high school students, and one of the students that won a $1,500 prize came up with something called Speakeasy. It is a software-based personal trainer to assist people during their preparations for public speaking. And some high school students put it together. And it will allegedly analyze their speech, body language, facial expressions, simulates uh, virtual reality, has an audience there for you. Folks, I, I do applaud the students focus on this and indeed I've, I've had various software products out and in fact I used to have a an audience for people projected on a wall in one of my older training studios and truth be told it's it's kind of a gimmick you know, if it's a gimmick that helps people all well and good but here's the thing I want to get back to and it relates to the first topic we can fixate on technology, on software, on PowerPoint slides all day long, but nothing really beats good old-fashioned speaking, watching yourself, and here's where the technology does help, but you don't need any fancy software. Just record yourself on your own cell phone, watch it, figure out what you like and don't like. Now, Again, to be fair to these students, I haven't seen how they analyze someone's facial expressions. But here's what I do know. You have a lifetime of experience analyzing people's facial expressions when you've been talking to them or hearing them speak. So if someone's facial expression is like this, talking for 20 minutes or 30 minutes, you already know how you feel about it. You feel like, wow, this guy's really boring or this person's really boring. Let me check my email instead. <laughs> so that's my, my biggest issue with all the fancy software programs. We're overcomplicating things. Now, yeah, if it can be a catalyst to get people to focus on some of these issues, fine. But the most important public speaking software is right here. Use your own brain. Practice your presentation out loud. Videotape it, record it, watch it. Figure out what you like and don't like that will solve almost all of your own problems. Coming down now to question section of our show. We take questions. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. You can email your questions at info at mediatrainingworldwide.com. Info at mediatrainingworldwide.com. You can also post them in the discussion section here, whether you're watching this on Facebook, YouTube or on a podcast. Here's the question that comes in today from one of my online students. Dear TJ, my biggest problem in public speaking is when I want to speak, my voice shakes. Not only my voice, but my whole body. And that makes me embarrassed. Well, I can understand being embarrassed if your body's shaking. I've lost my self-confidence. I think it's because of my social phobia. Unfortunately, I have to defend my thesis next month but I'm not sure I can do it. 
I will appreciate if you can please tell me what to do. Thanks for writing, number one. Number two, here's the big thing you need to practice defending your thesis. Find three of your fellow graduate students, have them bombard you with questions about your thesis, and practice on video. Watch it. Have them ask you questions. Watch it. Figure out just what you like, what good answers do. Don't even focus on what you don't like. Focus on what you like in your answers. Focus on moving more. Because here's what's likely to happen. You're likely to feel you're awful and shaking. If you actually watch the video, you may notice it's not that bad. You may have felt shaky, but when you actually watched yourself defending your thesis, it wasn't noticeable to other people's eyes, in your eyes watching the video. Well, use that to your advantage. Practice it again, and when you're doing it, you need to realize, hey, last time people didn't really notice, and when I watched myself, I didn't notice myself shaking. Maybe it's not that bad. This will make you more relaxed. It will make you less tense. So I want you to keep practicing, keep having your colleagues ask you questions, keep recording it until you get to the point where there's a video of yourself defending your thesis and you actually like how it's coming across. Once you do that, it actually becomes very, very difficult to be nervous because you don't want to be stating things. You don't want to be saying things for the first time in front of people in a tense situation. You want to be comfortable with it, practice so it just comes out. Good luck with your thesis and please let us know how it turns out. Now it's time for the public speaking tip of the day, a simple practical tip we bring you every day here, notes. It's perfectly fine to have speaker notes, but here's what happens with a lot of speakers, and a lot of my own clients do this. They've been introduced, people are hearing all these great things, they're waiting to hear you really present, and you walk up and you're sort of visibly handling a bunch of notes. Folks, that takes away all the mystery of it. That takes away the surprise. It gives people a sense that you're just going to start reading and droning on. Don't do that. Again, fine to have notes. My recommendation, first of all, have notes on a relatively small sheet of paper. Have it in a jacket pocket or something that isn't visible. So when you're walking up to the stage, the lectern, have your hands perfectly free be smiling at people, looking at people. Now, if you are behind the lectern, when you're looking at people smiling, perhaps when you've said your first few words, pull the notes out but below so that no one can see it. Then put it on a table, a desk, or better yet, have the notes out on a table or a lectern or desk before you even walk out there. It's fine to use notes, but the more people don't see you using notes, the more they'll sense that you're masterful, in command, and just talking to them and that you're really professional. So that's the tip of the day. Find to use notes. Don't make them visible to your audience. Don't let them see you touching it, holding it, folding it, and you'll be much better off. Question of the day from me to you. Who is your favorite business speaker? Not a politician, not a comedian but someone in the business world. Who's alive right now? Steve Jobs, great speaker, not with us anymore. And someone who's currently in a major position. So, you know, Bill Gates has actually become a much, much better speaker, but he's not a CEO anymore. So I'd like to know who you think is the best business speaker right now and tell me what you like about them. And if you have any links of recent speeches they've given, send them to me, we'd like to know. So you can either post that in the description section or send me an email. Send it to tj at mediatrainingworldwide.com. Today's spotlight goes to our course on facilitation. If you go to mediatrainingworldwide.com, click the online courses, we have a course on how to be a facilitator. Now this is a type of public speaking, but it's not giving a presentation, it's pulling the best ideas out of other people. So it's a different form of talking, but it can make people nervous. If you've never done it before, it can seem intimidating. Check out this course. You can check out the free preview. No obligation. Take a look at it and see if this is for you. So you take a look at that. And as always, if you haven't done so yet, sign up for our free online public speaking course. 
go to mediatrainingworldwide.com or click below. Thanks for joining me and may all of your presentations in life be successful. I'm TJ Walker.